this is uh, a really welcome opportunity for me to look back on things because Christmas campaigns are often organised at relatively short notice. It catches us by surprise every year. And historically, if I think about it, it's often been sort of November and someone said, what are we doing for Christmas? And people suddenly want campaigns and things done. And I'll touch on some of why they want things done. Um, but this is an opportunity to look back at five uh, Christmas campaigns I've been involved in. Just for those who don't know, the City of London is just one of 33 local authorities that makes up Greater London. So that's where I'm Head of Community Safety. Uh, it's 1.2 square miles, normally referred to as a square mile, and it has a very small resident population. Greater London, very different beast, and the money for most of what I'm going to talk about, the campaigns, largely, or the money that starts things off, came from the Greater London Authority, which has the Mayor of London. Um, making it a right Christmas, in some ways, just making it right, was kind of one of the things, because different people said, well, we want this for Christmas, we want this to happen, we want these outcomes, and when you start digging, what exactly do you mean? You often got to, can you just make sure it's all all right? Just make it right. And interestingly, Westminster, one of the other local authorities that make up London with a big nighttime economy, their, all their stuff, they're just calling it End the Night Right, is their current campaign, which has some interesting sponsors. Anyway, if you get bored, just look at the psychedelic baubles and it will all be over really soon. Obviously, there's been lots of alcohol campaigns. Uh, this is just a smattering of them. Um, we all have seen the ones, you know, the ones highlighting how embarrassing it can be, the state you can end up in, um, the potential for ending up in the cells, wasting your future, opportunities, uh, the, the delightful news that alcohol can also cause you cancer. Squeezed in one there that does mention Christmas, but often I think it would be fair to say a lot of Christmas alcohol campaigns have lacked a degree of seasonal sensitivity. It's been very much on the, you know, you're going to end up ruining your Christmas and you're going to, or you're going to end up in a cell. Um, now London, particularly the Mayor and the GLA, really wants to promote London as a great place to come out and socialise. Christmas is obviously an important part of that. In London now we have a night czar, Amy LeMay, whose job it is to promote London's nighttime economy. And this is, you know, the kind of thing we want people to be having parties, a bit of ice skating in the moat at the Tower of London here, or indeed travelling on the tube dressed as Santa. This is sort of the positive side of Christmas, the bit we'd like to promote. But obviously the bit that causes uh, lots of concern and gets uh, a lot of organisations and politicians concerned is the downside. So, you know, the alcohol-related fighting, the very significant peak demands, and it's spiky peak demands we get for the ambulance service over Christmas. And of course, Santa's got off the tube and he's now been escorted by two members of the Metropolitan Police. The bottom picture there, that we have a particular problem over Christmas where people get catastrophically drunk much earlier than usual, often in their best work clothes after their work Christmas lunch. And we get different, and one of the things I'll get to at the end, where we're building up a better picture now, is we get people needing ambulances much earlier in the evening because they're completely intoxicated, at maybe five or six o'clock in the evening. Whereas normally on a normal Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's kind of after the pub start emptying out that we normally see that. So we get a different um, timing, range, often people who aren't that used to getting drunk. Some of the previous campaigns, um, the, the Tis the Season to be Jolly it was a community safety one done by the City of London. But the ones I'm going to concentrate on here, the, the party people was the first big one, if you like, that we did with the London Ambulance Service. And some of the motivation for that was to try, the ambition was to see if we could do something to help reduce demand on the ambulance service, which at that time, it's relevant, was under enormous pressure in London. Um, the London Ambulance Service was actually in special measures for a number of years, and ambulance call times increased astronomically, and they were very, very stretched. Uh, and there was some talk uh, at senior levels about what we could do, and Christmas was coming, some, let's do a Christmas alcohol campaign and try to stop that element or reduce that element of demand. Um, I'll touch on how it worked. Follow-up years, we extended it, London Fire Brigade got involved, um, Metropolitan Police, other partners got involved. 
And back then, we spent considerable amounts of money putting posters on uh, underground stations, on tube trains. We handed out lots of oyster card holders, and obviously if you get a plastic oyster card holder, you're immediately going to think, I should drink less at Christmas. Um, we put a lot of effort into it. We spent a lot of money. Um, one of the party people campaign in actual cash terms, I think in total, we spent about £165,000. Quite a lot of money. Quite a lot of money in terms of what we managed to spend on other alcohol-related things. For this year, Christmas gone, we've spent a little bit more time distilling some of the knowledge from previous campaigns. What sort of products were we trying to develop? We're moving towards digital. Well, we nearly wholly digital, to help reach people, and certainly in central London, it makes a lot of sense to work with employers. We have some big employers, we have some good employer networks, we can put things out to them. We have found over the period that we've been, or I've been involved in these campaigns, employers are increasingly open to the idea of advice and support that they can be seen as responsible companies and if they are going to have a, a works Christmas do they quite like to put in a little bit of responsible drinking message uh, so we had a dedicated website which was hosted um, off the City of London we also had some digital messaging aimed at the public uh, and because of the wonders of digital um, we were able to time it to when we know peak times are and also concentrate in peak locations uh, which had a lot of benefits. Again, we got support in from some of our key partners, that's London Ambulance Service, Metropolitan Police, City of London Police, London Fire Brigade and Transport for London. Um, and we also did something, producing the central material, and this was one of the drivers for me, meant that we established a sort of baseline uh, in terms of quality control across London. I mentioned earlier, people go off Suddenly, it's nearly Christmas, we must do something. And it would be fair to say there's a very significant range in the quality of that product and differences in the messaging. Sometimes quite confusing to people. So we were providing a core, centrally produced uh, product that everyone could adapt uh, and use locally. And quite well received, particularly by boroughs who themselves have a lot less resource to spend in this area now. And it ran from uh, the end of November. This was the start of a, a lot of police activity, their Christmas campaigns through to New Year's Day. Mentioned the Mayor of London's got a priority around promoting London as a positive place to go out and enjoy yourself. So we don't want to be going out there and saying, don't drink. We want a positive message. It's Christmas time. Uh, our current mayor doesn't drink very conscious of the fact, doesn't want to be seen to be pushing that message. It's very much the responsible thing, you know, aiming to look after yourself, look after your friends. Um, with an element about highlighting the impacts that do occur on peak times on the emergency services. Also seeking to make a lot of use of what we hope is that human instinct to look after your friends, you know, perhaps suggest your friends, perhaps you could have a fruit juice or a Coke instead of having a, another brandy or whatever at this, uh, on this round. Um, so we ended up with Eat, Pace, Plan and the three wise things. And I should say my colleague Jess over there who did an awful lot of the work, that was pretty much the uh, strap line she came up with. Three simple messages, eat before going out, drink safely and sensibly. Okay, issues about quite what drink safely means. Plan your journey home. We have a big problem because the trains still stop running for a lot of London not long after midnight. We do have a significant problem around Christmas of people wandering around near our major stations with no real good idea about how they're going to get home. Um, it's a problem for them. It makes them vulnerable in a number of ways. Uh, the resources, we had an e-toolkit, as I said, really aimed at employers. And it was done so people could adapt it. People could put their own logos on it. They could top and tail it with their own messages. Um, local authorities, quite a lot of our health trusts picked it up as well. We used x -Aids, Facebook adverts, Twitter, um, Metro advert, um, and as I said, we, ha we had our website. Um, one of the resources that we, we had on there as well, that's what the actual... You know, we have an electronic version of my... Make sure everyone can have one of our scratch cards. Uh, this is basically the audit C quick Am I drinking too much? 
bit of advice. We've set it up so that boroughs could actually find out data relevant to their local area. The electronic version of this, we have the opportunity for some data capture on there. Uh, and again, we're putting on here links to TfL, travel, police, etc. Again, that's providing an element of quality control rather than people trying to generate their own messages locally. Now, I mentioned earlier about how much money we'd spent on the original um, party people campaign, 165,000, that's what we spent. We also handed out sweetie goodie bags as well as all these things. We must have spent 10,000 pound plus in staff time. You know, there was highly um, skilled London Ambulance Service staff, anyone I could beg and borrow, sticking sweets into bags to hand out uh, central locations, handing out Oyster card holders. Um, so, you know, probably not far shy of £200,000 in resources. This year we've spent less than 20000 And yet we can demonstrate through the wonders of the, the digital application how many times people have seen the message. So these are some of the things here. I will mention on the Metro, it's very topical. We paid for some adverts in the Metro for peak days, which I think were Thursdays, which is a big drinking day. Uh, we, got, we got a bit of a Brexit bonus. Um, in the, it was one of the days when the government had one of their first very embarrassing Brexit moments. Obviously, we didn't, no one could foresee that, or indeed how many there would be. But that meant that where we probably would have expected about three, 400,000 people, everyone was looking for their digital news. And what they got first before they got that was our Eat, Pays, Plan stuff. We also got some uh, pick-up um, from local newspapers over there. Um, I think in terms of reach, we were really very pleased and a little surprised, if I'm honest, but it, was, it, 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 it went well. We got some very positive coverage, and I'll come back to coverage. We had various people um, tweet. I've, I've mentioned the Knights are Amy LeMay. LAS picked it up. Councils picked it up. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio was our most popular. Um, so a little bit of humour there to help spread uh, the message. This is a bit where I could make some entirely implausible claims uh, for its impact. Um, if you can see the first view of the campaign, you've got that wonderful dip. Um, I suspect that's a bigger factor that the LAS was in a terrible position at that time and people knew you weren't going to get an ambulance and the ambulance service was, unless you were having a heart attack, you weren't going to get uh, an emergency response. Um, one of the things that's become clear as well to me is <laughs> ambulance data, a bit like crime data in my other world, the way it's counted pretty much changes every year. Operational procedures have a huge impact. Um, and the numbers look, you know, if you, if you round them up, they say, you know, five and a half, six thousand people over December uh, phone the LAS in relation to an alcohol-related incident. That's a big number, but if you put it against the number of people who are going out in London, the City of London alone has 40,000 people out in its pubs and clubs on a busy night. You know, we are talking hundreds of thousands across the City of London uh, on every of the sort of Christmas nights. Well, other years we've had uh, apparent big drops in crime as well at Christmas, but that actually correlated really closely to when we had the train strikes. So anyone who lived in South London was trying to get home while they could. You know, I suspect there was a lot of displacement that year of alcohol-related problems to where people live rather than where they worked and tended to socialise. Um, I think there is a lot that we need to think about how we measure the efficacy of this kind of campaign. What I am confident about with what we've done um, over the last few years, and I think we, we can demonstrate that we've honed it and we've improved it, is the acceptability that our partners will pick up with it. Employers are happy to work with it. Um, and I think that's probably as far as we, you know, we can confidently say, more people are happy to engage with the campaign they'll help promote it, measuring what its actual impact is on people's drinking, then measuring that through to whether that has uh, an impact on demand on ambulance, A&E or police services, 
is way beyond us at the moment, but something we're looking at. And this has driven some really good work, which may help with that. Um, I can't show you it here now, but uh, we have some wonderful analysts in the GLA, and we don't make a lot of use of them, actually. And I, I've asked them to, to look at some of our alcohol-related data. And the person who did do it left, and I thought that was it. But someone else has picked it up. And they've done some amazing work that I can see what date, what time, uh, male, female, age, borough, when alcohol-related incidents are happening. Now, that gives us a great opportunity, particularly using digital messaging, to target that resource. Also useful to start identifying you know, younger people tend to cluster around certain dates. When you get through to, for example, Christmas Day, hardly any young people require the LAS for alcohol-related incidents on Christmas Day. The over 65s are very heavily represented. You can only imagine it's the danger of sherry and perhaps carving the turkey, but it, we, there is a lot we could do there in terms of targeting our message and looking at resources. So I'm hopeful um, as we work on that, and it's also got police data, Transport for London data, that we might get to a position to be a little bit more confident in, in terms of seeing what has an impact. Uh, and they've also put temperature, the, the median temperature in there, which perhaps isn't that important for Christmas campaigns, but as we start looking at when our peak problems, which are in the summer, then we know that temperature's got a big role there. So we, we are going to be able to start evidencing uh, with a lot more accuracy when we have problems, and hopefully that will help us respond to them. And that's me. Thank you. Scratch cards on.